If you're thinking about moving to Cape Coral, Florida, stick around because I've got 10 things they don't tell you about living here that you're going to want to know before deciding to call Cape Coral home. We're talking about all that and more right now. Hey everyone, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Mark Ammons. I'm a real estate agent down here in Southwest Florida. And on this channel, I talk all about what it's like to live, work, eat, sleep, and play right here on the Gulf Coast of Florida. If that sounds like something that you're into, go ahead and click subscribe down below so you don't miss any new videos when they get released. And if you are thinking about making a move down here to the area and you want some help navigating our housing market and purchasing your new home, go ahead and reach out to me whichever way is best for you. If you're watching this on a TV, tablet, or computer, you can just pause the video right now. There's a QR code up here in the corner that you can scan, and that's gonna allow you to save all of my contact information directly into your phone. And if you're watching this on your phone already, all my information is down in the video description below, so feel free to call, text, or email so we can get started looking for your new home down here in Southwest Florida. With that out of the way, let's get into today's video. So if you've been keeping up with the Florida real estate market for any amount of time, you know that Southwest Florida, uh, in particular the Cape Coral, Fort Myers metro area, has really exploded over the last few years. Uh, according to US News & World Report, out of the top 10 cities to retire to in the United States, eight of them are down here in Florida, and of those eight, three of them are right here in Southwest Florida with the Fort Myers Cape Coral metro area coming in as number seven best city to retire to in 2021 and 2022. So because of how desirable of an area it is to live, it shouldn't come as a surprise. It's also one of the fastest growing areas in the country. Uh, out of the top 10 fastest growing cities in the country, nine of them are located within the state of Florida. With the Fort Myers Cape Coral area coming in as the number three fastest growing area in the country. And that's actually a drop in the rankings after being the number two fastest growing area in the country for the previous three years in a row. Now, with all these people moving down here, what I've found is there are still a number of things about living here that catch people by surprise uh, after they've moved, simply because nobody ever told them about these things. So in today's video, I wanna take you through 10 things that most people aren't told about living here that I'm confident will make your move down here easier, less frustrating, and will probably save you some time and money along the way. So stick with me till the end so you don't miss any of the tips I'm getting ready to share with you. So the first item on our list is something that you'll discover the first time you either visit Cape Coral yourself or if you have friends or family who are coming down to visit you and aren't planning on staying at your home. Uh, and that is how few hotels there are to choose from here in the city of Cape Coral. Um, in a city of almost 120 square miles and over 200,000 residents, we only have five hotels to choose from in the entire city. Uh, we have a Holiday Inn Express, a Hampton Inn, the Westin, uh, the Oyo Waterfront, and the Dolphin Key Resort. And the first time we were visiting Cape Coral as a family, we knew we wanted to stay in an Airbnb that was gonna be a similar style home to what we wanted to purchase if we were to move down here. So at that time, we didn't even look into what hotels were available. However, when it came time to plan our actual move, and we knew we were gonna be arriving in Cape Coral prior to our furniture getting here, we decided we would stay in a hotel for a few days until everything arrived. And that's when we realized just how few options there are to book a hotel in the city of Cape Coral itself. I think the reason is, is that there's actually very few people who come down to Cape Coral and just stay for short periods of time, say one to three days. Uh, because Cape Coral is not a large hub for business travel, uh, nor is it located in the middle of a busy travel corridor, most of the travel down here is for longer stretches uh, for people who are on vacations. And because Cape Coral has so many homes which are either owned by seasonal residents or are investors, um, there's a large supply of vacation rentals, uh, both single family homes and condos. And because of how large the supply we have, the prices for these homes are very competitive relative to what you would pay for just a single hotel room. Uh, and many of these homes are gonna be three and four bedrooms, two to three baths. Many will have a pool, a hot tub, and may very well be waterfront. Um, and with a lot of these homes, if they have a boat lift and the owners don't have their boat there while you're staying, you can rent a boat, have it delivered to the home and use it while you're staying there. So for most people, it's gonna make a lot of sense um, to just rent a full home uh, for a week uh, rather than staying in a hotel. You will see a large fluctuation in prices uh, for these homes, depending on whether they're in or out of season, which is essentially October through April. Uh, but this fluctuation seems to be about the same for both hotels and vacation rentals. So if you're looking at planning a trip down here to Cape Coral and you're disappointed with the lack of hotels that are available in the city, you may wanna explore Airbnb or VRBO to see what kind of homes are available to rent for your stay. And honestly, this is the route I would recommend for people who are considering moving to Cape Coral in general. 
Uh, I think it gives you a great opportunity to live in a house which may have similar amenities in a similar location uh, to where you're planning on buying. And this can give you a good idea about whether or not Cape Coral is gonna be the right fit for you. So with that said, if you would like to stay in a hotel or you have people coming down to visit and they're planning on staying in a hotel and they can't find anything here in Cape Coral, there's also some good options right across the bridge in Fort Myers. Um, so if you are planning a visit down here or have people coming down, um, just be sure to look at options early as both the hotels and vacation rentals fill up pretty fast, uh, particularly when we're in season. Um, however, no matter where you end up staying when you come down here, I'm confident you'll have an amazing visit and that you'll love the time you spend here in Cape Coral. So the second item on our list is more of a clarification of something that you hear about Cape Coral all the time. Uh, and as many of you know, Cape Coral is affectionately known as the Waterfront Wonderland and is home to more than 400 miles of canals that run through our city. Since we're surrounded by water on three sides, some people mistakenly believe that all 400 miles of these canals lead out to the Gulf of Mexico. However, just a little over a quarter of the canals, or about 100 miles of them, actually have access to the Gulf. Uh, and these saltwater canals, or Gulf access, uh, as they're often called, um, the commute times from your dock to open water can vary pretty dramatically. Uh, so some homes may be five to 10 minutes out to open water, while others can be over an hour. Uh, and part of the reason for the longer commute times is a combination of distance and the no wait zones that are in effect in all the saltwater canals in the city. So the remaining three cores of the waterfront homes in Cape Coral are located on either freshwater lakes or freshwater canals. Um, and when it comes to the general desirability, at least as far as how the market values each of these types of properties, the list would look something like this. So number one is gonna be Riverfront. Uh, these are homes on the outer perimeter of the city that look directly onto the Caloosahatchee River. These homes tend to have the best views um, and also have practically zero commute uh, out to open water. Uh, next would be saltwater canals with no bridges or locks. And this is what you'll often hear referred to as sailboat access. Um, and that's because without having any bridges to go under, you can navigate a sailboat through the canals and not have your mass interfere with any of the bridges. Um, and if you're not familiar with the term boat lock, it's essentially a gate system in a canal that allows boats to travel between two parts of a canal uh, that have different water levels. Uh, the main lock you'll hear about here in Cape Coral is the Chiquita boat lock. So this lock allows people in the southwest portion of Cape Coral to use the spreader canal to exit the canal system and get out to the river. Uh, and there's been a lot of controversy within the last few years uh, in Cape Coral over whether to remove the lock or keep it as it is. Cape Coral city leaders are again trying to remove the Chiquita lock. The first attempt failed when the Florida Department of Environmental Protection said no. NBC2 Shannon Close in Cape Coral with why they think this time will be different. Cape Coral City leaders hired a team of attorneys to help them remove it. Before that happens, the city needs the DEP's approval. As for now, the lock's gonna stay in place, uh, though it is possible it could still be removed in the future. Uh, and if you're familiar with this controversy over the lock, leave a comment down below about whether you think it should stay or be removed. I I'd love to hear what everyone thinks on this. It's also important to know that if you do have to go through the boat lock to access open water from your home, it will add some additional time to your commute. Uh, depending on where you're taking your boat out and when you're taking your boat out, uh, you may be the only one there and breeze right through, or if it's a busy weekend or a holiday, you could be waiting for quite some time uh, for your turn to go through the lock. So if you are looking for a waterfront home in the southwest portion of Cape Coral, do some research to see if you'd be required to go through the boat lock. Uh, and if that's gonna be a big deal for you, you may wanna look uh, at a different home in a different location. And if you're just starting your home search or you're about to and wanna find out whether the homes you're looking at are gonna have to go through the lock or not, feel free to reach out to me directly so we can take a look. So from a value perspective, next on the list is gonna be a lot on a freshwater lake followed by a freshwater canal. Uh, and of course you also have the option for a dry lot, which is a lot that's not located on the water at all. Uh, this is gonna be the most affordable option and with all the other ways that we have to access water down here in Cape Coral, it's still a fantastic option. All right, so the third item on our list has specifically to do for those of you who are interested in purchasing a vacant lot on which to build a new house. Uh, as most people know, Florida's home to a wide variety of wildlife and when people think of Florida, most of them think of alligators, snakes, lizards, and other dangerous animals. Uh, and while Cape Coral does have all those animals as well, we also have a very cute little bird known as the burrowing owl. Uh, and while the burrowing owl is a very cute little animal and you can see them all over the city, uh, they can cause a lot of headaches when they locate one of their burrows on a vacant lot. And as you drive around Cape Coral, you're gonna see many lots that have white PVC stakes in a square, and then there's a wooden cross uh, placed in the middle. Uh, and these are marking the location of an established owl burrow. Uh, depending on the weather and the time of day, you may see a few owls uh, perched out on the post or down on the ground uh, near the burrow. Um, now, while it's not impossible to build a home on a lot with burrowing owls, it's a fairly lengthy process. Uh, there's many inspections and permits along the way. Um, so if you find a perfect lot and you don't need to build for a while, it may still be worthwhile uh, to purchase a lot that has burrowing owls located on it. 
However, if you're in a hurry to get your new home under construction, you may want to look at other lots which don't require the relocation of these owls. So in addition to burrowing owls, the same thing is also true for gopher tortoises, uh, though this tends to be less common down here than the burrowing owls. Um, and one other potential hangup you may run into on a vacant lot is the presence of mangroves. Uh, if mangroves are found on the property, they have to be removed prior to the start of construction. This typically requires the involvement of the Army Corps of Engineers as well as the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, and then once removed, an equivalent amount of mangroves have to be replanted through the Wetland Restoration and Mitigation Bank. So basically you pay a fee which covers the planting of new mangroves somewhere else in Florida to make up for those that had to be removed on your property. Uh, so big picture, in the event that you do have either burrowing owls, gopher tortoises, or mangroves located on your lot, doesn't mean that you can't build, uh, but it does mean that there's going to be a lot of additional hoops that you need to jump through uh, and costs that you will incur during the process. Speaking of additional costs that you may incur when buying either a vacant lot or a resale home down here in Cape Coral, brings us to number four on our list, uh, which is to know what assessments are and how to check for them. Uh, so essentially assessments are a tax that are paid uh, over time to the city, and in this case they're there to pay for the utilities expansion project. Um, where areas that were previously on well and septic systems are then converted over to public uh, sewer and public water. Uh, so if you're buying an area that has not been converted over to public utilities yet, there won't be any assessments on the property at this point, uh, but they will kick in once the utilities expansion project is completed in that area. Uh, and these assessments can either be paid in full as a lump sum or they can be paid down gradually over time. Uh, there's no penalty to paying them down over time. So this is generally the best way to do it, but some people will go ahead and pay down the full amount uh, just to get it over with and have all the assessments paid off. Um, that used to be a big selling point for a lot of people, but with the market as strong as it is right now, I don't really see it making a difference in the eyes of most buyers. Um, and now the longer it's been since a particular property was converted, the lower the outstanding balance on the assessments are going to be, as more of it will have already been paid down by the uh, previous owners. So it's a pretty quick and simple process to check to see if there are any assessments remaining on our property, and if so, how much. Um, all you need to do is head over to capecoral.net, select I want to find assessments and payoffs, then just scroll down and click start. Uh, you can go ahead and read the disclaimer and click OK. And then in the upper left corner, you can enter the address for the property that you're interested in. In this case, we're just going to put in the address of a vacant lot that happens to be on the market right now. And now over here, you'll see the box pop up with a lot of additional information about this particular lot. And what we want to do is come over here to estimated loan payoff and click run report. And that will pull up your estimated loan payoff where we have the address, types of utilities that were converted, and the balances remaining for each. Now the two columns that you see over here on the right, current amount and estimated payoff amount, uh, the current amount is the exact amount that is due uh, that tax cycle and the estimated payoff amount is a total balance remaining if you were to pay everything off at one time. Uh, so that's really about all you need to know about assessments at this point, uh, just what they are and how to find them uh, so that you can do your due diligence when you start your home search. Uh, and this is also why it's beneficial to work with a local realtor who can look into things like this for you as well and make sure that you have a full picture of all the costs that you're going to incur with your new home purchase so that you're not caught off guard when the tax bill shows up. Okay, so number five on our list is something that unfortunately too many people find out too late, and that is to check the proximity of the potential homes that you're interested in purchasing to any nearby schools and figure out where their car drop-off lines are. Um, now, when I went to school as a kid, we had one set of schools for the entire county. Almost everyone rode the bus, so this wasn't an issue. But what I found in Cape Coral is that a large number of parents do drive their children to and from school each day. Uh, and there's still a large number of kids who do ride the bus, uh, but because of the number of parents that are dropping off their children and then picking them up, these lines do get fairly long. Uh, I was actually out for a run early in the morning on the first day of school. I was blown away uh, how long some of these car lines are. Uh, now, as the year goes on, the lines do get shorter and go faster as everyone learns where to go, when the best time to get there is. Um, they're still fairly lengthy. Because of this, if you live on a street that's used for one of these drop-off lines, you may have trouble either getting into or out of your driveway in the morning or the afternoons when the lines are there. Uh, and even if you're not affected by the cars in the drop-off line, you may find that there's substantially heavier traffic in front of your house uh, at these times as all the parents that are leaving in the opposite direction where they come from uh, are going to be going by your house. So. Just because you're not directly across the street from a school doesn't mean that you're not necessarily going to be affected by these drop-off lines. So depending on your work schedule, what time you leave the house every day, um, this could become an inconvenience for you and catch you off guard if you're not aware of it. So my recommendation is to check the location of the homes that you're looking at relative to where the schools around you are going to be and get an idea of if this is something that's going to be affecting you before you move down. Okay, so number six on our list deals with natural gas utilities. Uh, depending on where you live now, natural gas may be your primary source of fuel for heating, for cooking, uh, for your hot water heater, maybe even your clothes dryer. 
However, you're gonna find that natural gas is not something that we have in abundance down here in Southwest Florida, particularly Cape Coral. Uh, there is a small portion of the Northeast Cape that does have some natural gas available to it. Uh, there's been talk of expanding that further. However, most of the homes down here do not have natural gas available to them. Uh, now this doesn't mean that you don't have the option to still have gas at your home, uh, but it does mean that you'll have to go with a propane tank, either one that is above ground or one that's been buried in your yard in order to have gas at your home. Um, and honestly, I was a little disappointed when we first moved down and I realized that natural gas wasn't gonna be available. Uh, but I actually found after living here is that I really didn't miss it much at all and I actually see a lot of benefits to not having it. Um, one of the biggest things that I loved about having natural gas was the ability to use it to heat my home with. Uh, however, considering that most of us down here are gonna run our heat for a few hours throughout the entire year, uh, it doesn't make sense to have natural gas at your house just to run your heater a couple days out of the year. Also, I've been used to cooking with natural gas uh, for many years, and when I learned that gas wasn't gonna be an option at my particular home, I didn't wanna have a propane tank installed, so I decided to have an induction cooktop put in instead, uh, and I have found it to be a much better option for cooking with than gas was. Uh, one of the big advantages I found with the induction cooktops is they don't put any additional heat into your home other than the heat that's actually coming out of the food itself. Uh, so if you have a gas cooktop now, you probably know that half or more of the heat ends up going around the side of the pan into your house. Uh, and since we run our air conditioners most of the year down here, it doesn't make sense to be putting all this additional heat into your house that you're then having to pay to remove. Um, so one of the items that many people will use the gas for uh, is their hot water heater. Uh, however, you'll find here in Florida that most people's hot water heaters are located in their garages where it's typically pretty warm. Uh, to blistering hot. So throughout most of the year, your hot water heater really isn't working very hard at all uh, to keep the water hot in there. Uh, so I think in the end, you'll find this to be a more efficient way to heat your water for your home uh, over using gas. Um, so if you do currently have gas and you're sad to be losing it, I know how you feel, but I can tell you that honestly, I think the options we have down here in Cape Coral are just as good, if not better. Um, so keep that in mind. If you are disappointed about not having gas anymore, I think you'll adjust pretty quickly like I did uh, and learn to love the options that are available to you. All right, so number seven on our list is to be aware that if you're gonna be using a temporary storage container, such as a pod, uh, a U-Haul U-Pack, or any of the other portable storage containers that are out there for your move down here to Cape Coral, you do need to apply for a permit with the city uh, in order to be able to keep that container in your driveway for the period of time that you're gonna be using it. Uh, there's an online form that you can fill out with the city to apply for the permit. There is a $40 permit fee that you will be required to pay at that time. Uh, but a lot of people are never told about this and then they get caught off guard when code enforcement uh, informs them about it when they're down here. So I think it's important to point out prior to planning your move down here to Cape Coral. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking that this is a, a little bit overboard and I definitely understand that. But I think the goal here is to be able to make sure that people aren't keeping these things out in their driveways for weeks or even months on end, uh, which ends up being an eyesore for everyone else in the neighborhood. So if you are planning on using one of these temporary storage containers as a part of your move down here to Cape Coral, just be sure to apply for the permit prior to your move so you can avoid any unnecessary headaches when you finally get down here. All right, so next on our list is number eight, which is to be aware that no matter what house you buy down here in Cape Coral, it's probably gonna have less storage than the house you currently have now. Uh, depending on where you live now, you may either have a basement, a storage attic, uh, maybe even both. And if you're like most people who have those storage options available to you, they're probably full of stuff, most of which you likely don't need. Um, it's important to remember down here that we don't have any basements uh, in Florida. And although you will technically have some kind of an attic space, it's really not gonna be suitable for storing most of the items that you have. Uh, because of how hot the attic get down here in the summertime, combined with humidity, anything you put up there is most likely gonna get ruined. You'll hear stories of people who move down here and put their artificial Christmas trees up in the attic because that's where they always put it. Next year comes around, they go to get the tree down, they open the box and there's nothing left but a big pile of melted green plastic. Uh, so don't make the mistake of thinking that just because you keep certain things in your attic now, you're gonna be able to do the same thing down here. You probably won't. Uh, and many people will choose to use some or all of their garage uh, for their overflow storage. But again, these garages are not climate controlled and depending on uh, what you're keeping out there, it may or may not fare too well. Uh, one option that a lot of people do choose to explore is getting a climate controlled storage unit somewhere in town. Um, if you're a pack rat, fortunately we have a huge number of these storage facilities to choose from here in Cape Coral, uh, and there's more going in all the time. It actually got so bad about a year ago with the number of permits that have been applied for within the city um, that the city of Cape Coral made several changes to where these facilities could be located to make them less visible from the main streets in Cape Coral. 
Uh, so most of the new products that are going in are gonna have to be behind a shopping center or a plaza or something to block the view of them from the street. So even though you do have options for additional storage once you get down here, my advice is to purge absolutely as much stuff as you possibly can before you move down. Uh, not only will it save you the cost of paying to have all the stuff moved down here, but it's generally a huge relief for most people when they can finally purge and get rid of a lot of the stuff they've been holding on to for so long. Uh, I found all too often that people who don't follow this advice and don't do enough downsizing prior to moving, they still end up having to get rid of all the excess stuff once they get down here and then they look back and they're frustrated with themselves for paying people to move this stuff halfway across the country just to then get rid of it anyway. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of options available to you if you are looking to purge and downside um, between places like Goodwill, Salvation Army, Craigslist, Church, Facebook Marketplace, uh, apps like Let Go and Offer Up, uh, and many more. It's extremely easy to get rid of those things nowadays that you just don't need anymore. So here's my recommendation, purge as much as you think you need to, and then get rid of another 10 to 20% of your stuff, and you'll probably be close to where you need to be. All right, so tip number nine on our list is to be prepared to have to pay some kind of deposit when you sign up for many of the utilities for your new home. Uh, some of these deposits are required of everyone and others are gonna be dependent on your credit history and some other factors that they take into consideration. Uh, I believe that all residents are required to pay a deposit when they sign up for water and sewer with the city. Uh, this is usually around $100. After a certain period of time, assuming you've developed a history of on-time payments, they do return this deposit back to you. Uh, and also your electric utility company, which is gonna be LCEC for most people in Cape Coral, um, they do require a deposit in some cases as well, and this is usually based on your credit rating. Um, so if you are required to pay a deposit, it's refundable after a certain number of consecutive on-time payments have been made, uh, so you can get that money back. And while these deposits aren't huge expenses in the grand scheme of things, there's enough other costs that go into moving already that having to put a few hundred extra dollars out uh, can make a big difference to some people, especially if they don't know to expect it. Um, and while there really isn't anything you can do to avoid these expenses, uh, hopefully knowing about them ahead of time can help you budget a little bit better when it comes time to make your move down here to Cape Coral. All right, so we made it to the end of our list. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, and we're gonna wrap things up here with tip number 10, which is specifically for you pet owners out there. Uh, if you have small animals, whether they're small dogs, cats, or whatever else you may have, and those animals go outside either with you or by themselves, just be sure you're keeping a close eye on them. Uh, we do have a number of different wildlife species down here that are predators and they do prey on smaller animals. Uh, so these could be bald eagles, uh, ospreys, alligators, coyotes, uh, and some larger species of snakes, uh, as well as several others. And while they usually go after things like rabbits, mice, fish, uh, and other small animals, some of them will go after house pets uh, if they have the opportunity. So just keep a watchful eye out when your animals are outside, even if you're with them. And if you do have a home with a fenced in yard uh, and you have small pets that you like to let out, you may just wanna limit the amount of time they're out there while unsupervised. Uh, it only takes a few seconds for something to happen. So just be aware of what's around. Uh, one other thing you're gonna to wanna to be aware of with your pets is to watch out for potential fire ant mounds. Um, fire ants are mean little creatures that will do just about anything to protect their nest uh, and their bites are not only extremely painful, uh, but they deliver venom that can be fairly hazardous to humans and can be lethal for smaller animals. So uh, depending on how many times they're stung, they can be deadly. Um, these fire ants live in nests called mounds. They usually look like piles of loose dirt on top of the grass. Uh, and one of these mounds can have thousands of ants in it. And oftentimes you're not actually gonna see any of the ants until you disturb the mound. But once you do, uh, every last ant in that mound uh, is gonna be coming after you. So it can be a good idea to inspect your yard from time to time, see if you have any signs of fire ant mounds around. And if you do, it's best to either call a professional pest control company to come out and deal with them, or you can use some of the treatments that are available from your local big box stores like Lowe's or Home Depot. So one way or another, be sure that you're staying safe out there, uh, keep your pets and your small children safe, and ultimately, be sure that you're taking time to enjoy the outdoors and all the amazing things that Southwest Florida and Cape Coral have to offer. Uh, there's so many benefits to living here and so many amazing opportunities to take advantage of. So don't let some of these smaller inconveniences deter you from following your dream of moving down here to Southwest Florida and living your best life. Uh, that wraps it up for us today. Uh, that's the end of our list. I truly appreciate you tuning in uh, and sticking with me until the end. I hope that some of these tips will be helpful for you if you do decide to move down here to Cape Coral or Southwest Florida. And if you did get some value out of this video, it'd mean a lot to me if you would hit the like button down below to make it easier for people just like yourself to find these videos. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing so you don't miss any new videos when they get released. Uh, and if you are thinking about making a move down here to Cape Coral and you wanna learn more not only about what it's like to live, work, eat, sleep, and play, but also how to navigate our housing market and get the best house for the best price for you and your family to call home, 
please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you and be a part of your relocation down here to Cape Coral. And if you are ready to get started and you wanna hop on a 15 to 30 minute Zoom call for us to get to know each other a little bit better and for me to learn more about your needs and what it is you're looking for in a new home, you can simply scan the code right up here with the camera on your phone. It's gonna take you to a website where you can book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call directly with me. Uh, and there's also a link down in the description below that will take you to the same website. Um, so that just about wraps it up for us today. As always, thanks for tuning in, be well, and I'll see you on the next one.